Hi, everybody, and welcome to the audio version of Exploration's weekly newsletter, this time for the week of June 25th, 2021. I'm Renee Meredith, the COO of Exploration Group, and as always, my special shout out to Heidi So and Jules Ramos, who work really, really hard on our newsletter every single week. And now, the news. Congressmen introduce American Music Fairness Act to compel radio to pay royalties on recorded music. On Thursday, Reps Ted Deutsch and Daryl Issa introduced the bipartisan American Music Fairness Act, which aims to rectify a situation where terrestrial radio pays no royalties to performers or recorded music copyright owners. The act was introduced via a live-streamed event that saw lawmakers joined by a collection of artists that include veteran singers Dionne Warwick and Sam Moore, along with the Dropkick Murphys' Ken Casey. The bill is at least partially in response to the Local Radio Freedom Act that Steve Womack and Kathy Castor introduced last month, which is championed by the National Association of Broadcasters. That act aims to continue terrestrial radio's royalty-free status, stating that Congress should not impose any new performance royalty or other charges that might create economic hardship for locally owned radio stations. Some 138 representatives and 18 senators have signed that non-binding resolution. Senators Martin Heinrich and John Barrasso are championing similar legislation in the Senate. YouTube wins EU copyright case, but is still liable for hosting unauthorized works. A long-running legal battle over whether online platforms like YouTube are liable for copyright infringement committed by their users has taken a fresh twist with the European Court of Justice ruling on June 22nd that platforms should not be held accountable for hosting unauthorized works in certain cases. The news stems from a 2008 dispute between German music producer Frank Peterson and YouTube over unauthorized user uploads. Important points to consider include that services like YouTube are active platforms and are liable for breaches of copyright if they are aware protected content is available illegally and refrain from expeditiously deleting it or blocking access to it. Second, and of far greater importance for rights holders, the ruling only concerns platforms' liability at the time of the original Peterson court actions and doesn't take into account the major reforms to copyright law introduced throughout Europe as part of the European Union's copyright directive passed in 2019. Sound Exchange distributions grew 4% to $947 million in 2020. U.S. Digital Performance Royalties Agency Sound Exchange has published some figures for last year showing that its distributions grew by 4% to nearly $947 million. As Sound Exchange President and CEO Michael Hupp put it, with venues shuttered and touring revenues effectively non-existent, digital royalties represented the lifeblood and primary income source for a large segment of the music industry. In 2019, SoundExchange paid out $908.2 million, which was down 4.7% year-on-year, but only because of a $150 million settlement with SiriusXM in 2018. Vivendi's Universal Music to sell 10% stake to Bill Ackman SPAC, valuing label at $41 billion. French media conglomerate Vivendi has finalized a deal to sell a 10% stake in Universal Music Group to a so-called blank check company set up by Bill Ackman's hedge fund, Pershing Square, valuing the music major at $41.6 billion. US dollars. Vivendi has long been planning an initial public offering of the music firm in Amsterdam by late September, and that plan is still on, with the SPAC Pershing Square Tontine Holdings telling shareholders Sunday that they will receive their shares in UMG later this year after the IPO. Vivendi previously sold a 20% stake in UMG to a consortium led by Chinese online giant Tencent. It has said it plans to distribute 60% of UMG while retaining the remaining 10% for a minimum period of two years. Shazam hits 1 billion song matches per month. According to Apple, song recognition app Shazam has surpassed 1 billion song matches per month, bringing its total to 50 billion tags since its inception in 2002. 
Since its start as a text message service, Shazam's number of song matches per month has continued to grow, reaching exponential heights in 2008 when it launched on Apple's App Store. Shazam reached 1 billion total tags in 2012 and has now achieved the same rate per month less than 10 years after crossing that milestone. The app's song recognition process is designed with user privacy in mind, creating a digital footprint of the audio and matching it against a database containing millions of songs. The raw audio is not sent to Apple, which ensures that the process is secure. Besides its song recognition capabilities, Shazam also allows users to interact with and share audio content across devices and mediums. Canadian rights agency CMRRA strikes multi-year TikTok deal. TikTok has struck a multi-year deal with the Canadian Musical Reproduction Rights Agency, CMRRA, covering digital mechanical royalties in Canada. As is now standard for such agreements, it covers past usage of musical works as well as setting down the terms for future royalty payments. Not only has the platform fueled new song delivery, but has also given classic songs new life, said CMRRA President Paul Shaver. That's all for me this week. Thank you all so much for listening, and don't forget to click subscribe for more great content from Exploration. And as always, please don't forget to be kind to each other. To each other.